Does this position look familiar to you? It's Black's move. If not, maybe when I play through the following sequence of moves and the position evolves, it will become familiar to you. Maybe. So what we have here are a series of exchanges which occur on the f6 square, followed up with the knight move to d7, king moves, knight takes rook, king takes knight, and a pawn race ensues where white queens first, black queens next with check, and after the white king moves, queen captures queen and white resigns. If you haven't guessed it already, this was the sequence of moves played out in the final round game in the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer. In this movie, Jonathan Poe had the white pieces against Joshua Waitzkin in the final round. In this movie, Joshua Waitzkin's final round win propelled him to be the sole winner in the 1986 National Primary Chess Championship. In real life, not in movie land, this did not happen. The game I'm about to show you was the one which occurred in real life in the final round of the 1986 National Primary Chess Championship. As I show the moves of the actual game, I will not be doing any game analysis. Instead, I will be playing my part in helping to provide a snapshot to not only the chess world, but the world in general about Jeffrey William Sauer. I think the movie was very much so misleading about who all the fuss was about in New York City in the mid-1980s, and more importantly, I feel that Jeffrey William Sauer was not given the credit he so much deserves. This is my motivation. In real life, it was Jeffrey William Sarwer, age 7, who was playing the white pieces here against Joshua Waitzkin, age 9. This was the final round game of the 1986 National Primary Chess Championship. Jeff was born on May 14, 1978 in Kingston, Canada. He was a chess prodigy. When Jeff was in New York City, he'd frequent the Manhattan Chess Club. Bruce Pandafini gave Jeff and his sister Julia free life memberships to the Manhattan Chess Club for their talent in chess, memberships which are usually reserved for grandmasters. Bruce was quoted saying, I've never met any child with more talent for the game than Jeff. I've worked with some of the best players and observed all the others from the United States and none of them compared to Jeff in raw ability." End quote. One of the first public displays of Jeff's talent for chess was in Montreal, Canada in 1985, where at the age of seven he took on ten players simultaneously, losing only one game. Jeff would very often play blitz chess with the Hustlers at Washington Square Park, which drew large crowds to observe. By the age of eight, Jeff was playing forty games of chess simultaneously. Jeffrey William Sauer went on to win the Under-10 World Youth Chess Championship in Puerto Rico in 1986, representing Canada. Jeff's excitement for the game was noticed by Grandmaster Edmar Mednis, and he invited Jeff and his sister Julia, who was also a world champion for girls under 10, to analyze the 1986 World Championship match between Kasparov and Karpov on PBS. Jeff and Julia continued to do this for the rematch in 1987 as well. After this, Jeff and Julia became well-known in media circles and appeared on several talk shows. Jeff was the subject of a huge GQ article in September of 1986 about him being the future of chess, the next Bobby Fischer. In real life, this was the final position of the game between these two players. Only the Kings remained on the board. This draw had nine-year-old Joshua Waitzkin sharing the 1986 National Primary Chess Champion title with seven-year-old Jeffrey William Sarwer. Tragically, around March and April of 1987, Jeffrey William Sarwer's father made him quit the game he loved, and the chess world was robbed of someone who many believed to be one of the strongest prodigies in the history of the game. I think the quote by Alan Kaufman about Jeffrey William Sauer only adds to the tragedy. He said, quote, Jeff at nine is stronger than Bobby was at eleven. If there is a video to comment on, this is the one, especially for chess players. My comment to Jeff is this. Keep in mind that you have a life membership to the Manhattan Chess Club, and so when the time is right, I think it would be great to see you come back to the chess world 
even if just for a little while. You would undoubtedly be an inspiration.